In the near future, the Earth has been attacked by a new virus that not only destroys plants, but also any animals that consume it. As a result, the oxygen levels on Earth have begun reducing to the point where human beings will start suffocating if the situation continues. The movie begins when we are introduced to Dr. Stephen Ross, a scientist who has found a solution that will save humankind from extinction if his mission succeeds. The mission is called Project Gemini. Eight years ago, archaeologists were able to find artifacts from billions of years ago. In his research, Dr. Stephen Ross was able to figure out that these devices were responsible for the creation of life on Earth. Dr. Ross managed to recreate these two artifacts, one being a warp engine that will enable travel into deep space, and the other being a sphere that is responsible for the creation of life. Ross and his team then sent an unmanned spacecraft into space to gather data, and it brought information about a planet called Tess that will be suitable for humanity. The mission, Project Gemini, will involve a small crew of scientists and military personnel, including Dr. Ross himself, who will travel with the sphere and use it to create life on the new planet, preparing the planet for human migration. On the day of takeoff, we see Dr. Stephen Ross headed to board the ship. Meanwhile, his wife is driving, racing to see him while trying to reach him by phone. But by the time she arrives at the space station, she finds that Ross has already left for space and Project Gemini has begun. In space, all seems well, and the crew is getting ready to make their first jump into deep space. We see one of the researchers, by the name of Peter Lehman, making final checks on the engine before joining the rest of the crew on the bridge. As they make the jump, the whole crew passes out as an effect of fast travel. But in the engine room, we see something alive and moving. The whole crew awakens after the jump is complete, but when they look at the results of the jump, they realize that they are not at their destination. Somehow, the jump has taken them to another part of the universe that they don't know. The crew is lost in space. But where are they, and why did they end up there? Stephen Ross blames Peter Lehman for this failure. Ross claims that Peter was negligent when preparing for the jump, and as a result, he has compromised the whole mission. Peter is relieved of his station and confined to his room. Moments later, there's an alert that an airlock in the ship has been opened. Before the crew can find out what has happened, they see Peter's body floating in space. The crew assumes that Peter has taken his life because of his guilt for compromising the mission. But one of his associates, another researcher by the name of Leona Redwood, rejects the fact that Peter would take his own life. The rest of the crew tries to find out where they are before they can move again. Realizing they will be here for a while, Stephen looks into the planet they have arrived at. He finds out that apart from the low oxygen levels, the planet is more suitable for life than their previous destination. Alongside a handful of crew members, Stephen takes the initiative to land on the new planet. They leave one crew member on the main ship back in space. The crew carries out their mission by setting the Project Gemini sphere in a cave and activating it to begin creating life on the new planet, preparing the planet for other humans. When the ground crew returns to the lander, they receive bad news. Apparently, the sphere they carried had an alien life form they called the Trojan, and it is this alien that killed Peter Lehman after he was relieved of his position. Peter had gone back to the engine room to find evidence and prove that he was not responsible for risking the mission, but something attacked him when he was alone. The crew is informed that the Trojan was in the lander with them when they went to carry out the mission, so their lives are in danger. With this turn of events, a military officer named Ryan declared declares martial law, and takes over the mission from Stephen Ross. Now the crew's lives are prioritized before the mission, and Stephen doesn't seem pleased with this. Before the crew can prepare for their next step, they get an alert from the sphere. It looks like the Trojan has reprogrammed it to create another kind of life form, not what the crew programmed it to make initially. Stephen wants to head out and change this immediately, but Ryan stops him telling Steve that they will deal with the sphere once the Trojan has been dealt with. Steven seems restless, so he convinces another of his fellow researchers named David to head out with him and fix the sphere. David seems reluctant, but ends up agreeing to help Steven. They head back to the cave and attempt to fix the sphere. In the cave, David notices on his monitor that the Trojan is moving towards them, so he tells Steven that they should head back to the lander. Steven still wants to stay, so a fight breaks out. David shoots at Steven 
as a threat, but ends up breaking a piece of the sphere that Stephen picks up. The Trojan comes after Stephen and David when they are in the cave. Luckily, the two researchers manage to escape back to the lander, but the Trojan comes after them and infiltrates the ship also. Alarms blare throughout the ship, and we see Leona Redwood waking up from her room on her own. The empty corridor she's in shows traces of the Trojan, which seems to be after her. A fellow crewmate grabs her and they hide in a lab, but the Trojan finds them. The crewmate stays to face the alien to buy time so Leona can escape, but he ends up losing his life because of it. Leona joins the rest of the crew on the bridge, where they try to plan what to do against this threat. First is to switch on the ship's power and get the cameras working so they can track the Trojans' movements. But to do that, one of the crewmates will have to leave the safety of the bridge. Steven decides to go since he feels responsible for what has happened, and he succeeds in getting the power on right before the mysterious alien attacks him. With this success, Steven comes up with a plan to lure the Trojan out of the lander and burn it with the engine thrusters. The whole crew agrees to Steven's plan, including Ryan, and so they carry carry it out. Unfortunately, the plan fails. The Trojan affects controls of the lander's thrusters, and instead, Leona Redwood loses her life. Steven, who was outside to lure the Trojan, hurries back to the lander, and David lets him inside just before the Trojan gets inside too. During the incident, David is harmed by the Trojan and becomes infected with an unknown virus. Steven also manages to collect a tentacle that was cut off from the Trojan during their altercation. While focused on treating David, Steven engages in research, leading to the revelation of two significant details. The first is a method for developing a vaccine against against the virus, inspired by his attempts to treat David. The second is the discovery that the Trojan is a bio-robot created by the Sphere. Steven is now eager to destroy the Trojan and finally reprogram the Sphere, but Ryan locks him in the lab with David. Ryan tells Steven that he's under arrest because his decisions have led to the deaths of multiple crew members. Ryan tells Steven that he is obsessed with the mission and disregards the lives of others. We then get into a flashback, and here we see Steven's wife, Amy. On her hand, she is wearing a bracelet made by Steven from the artifacts he found from Project Gemini. Steven arrives, and she tells him that he shouldn't go on the mission. Amy is close to finding a vaccine against the virus that is plaguing Earth, she tells him she is pregnant, and that he has done enough for the mission. But Steven turns her down and claims that he will go on the mission. Amy throws the bracelet gifted to her by Steven in anger and tells him that he doesn't care for humanity. Steven only wants to be the hero. Back to the present, we see Steven talking to Richard through a monitor. Richard is the crewmate who remained on the main ship in space, while the others landed to carry out the mission. Richard is still trying to align the surrounding planets to figure out where they are, but there has been no success. Suddenly, Stephen asks Richard to realign the planets to their locations and see how they will look in four billion years in the future. Richard does what Stephen asks, and here, a huge truth is revealed. Apparently, they did not travel through space, but through time, and they ended up arriving on Earth four billion years in the past. Steven figured this out when he saw in a photo that the bracelet he gave his wife is very similar to the broken piece of the sphere that he picked up earlier. This completely changes their mission. Now they realize that they are responsible for the creation of life on Earth, and that if they fail to take down the Trojan, there will be no humanity. Also from treating David, Steven found a way to complete his wife's vaccine and and save Earth from annihilation. Steven leaves a message to his wife on the fragment that will later become her bracelet, and heads out to talk with Ryan with the help of Richard. Ryan was planning to head out to the cave and blow himself up with the Trojan and the Sphere. Steven stops him and tells him of the Sphere's importance. The two come up with a new plan to blow up the Trojan in the lander. Before they can carry out their new plan, Ryan is shot by David. It seems the infection got to David's head, and now he chooses to kill the rest of his crewmates for the Trojan. Steven escapes from David and goes ahead with his plan to blow up the Trojan by first letting it inside the lander. Steven is in a tough fight with both David and the Trojan, a really intense moment. Sadly, the battle ends with David being defeated by the monster he sided with. At the same time, Steven barely gets away from the lander, escaping just seconds 
seconds before it blows up. After killing the Trojan, Stephen heads back to the cave and reprograms the sphere to create life on Earth, and then waits for Amy. Meanwhile on Earth, Amy sees the message on the bracelet from Stephen and immediately hurries to Stephen's lab where they found the original artifacts. She activates the sphere using Stephen's message and successfully communicates with Stephen through holograms. Stephen tells Amy of his situation and apologizes to her. He tells her how to complete her vaccine and save Earth, but knowing he will never return turn, Stephen shares with Amy his regret over never being able to touch her or their child again. The movie ends with Amy in her house. She has given birth, and the vaccine seems to be successful because the plants in her house are growing properly again. The camera pans to view the Earth from space, and the movie ends. What's your favorite movie featuring a time loop? Let me know in the comments. And be sure to like the video and subscribe so that you don't miss our next recap. Thanks for watching.